Today's topic is Airflow and Control-M, and specifically where business applications and Airflow um, meet via Control-M. I'm really gonna be talking about three main things. One is giving you context on what Control-M is, how do we see the role of Control-M in the enterprise, what's the Control-M and Airflow integration about, and time permitting, we'll go through like a click-through demo. So starting with how do we see the role of Control-M in an enterprise? So this should be no surprise to any of you. You guys are all uh, practitioners. You've got lots of teams using lots of technology, and we're trying to drive lots of different outcomes at the bottom. And the types of outcomes we are talking about are you know, anything ranging from financial close processing, supply chain, data pipeline orchestration, and others. Now, generally, there is very universal agreement that the outcomes at the bottom in production should be highly automated and orchestrated. You know, nobody says launch a new initiative, but let's keep automation at a minimum, right? The, the challenge though uh, in the enterprise is that all these technologies in the middle, they come with some built-in automation utility. So you've got Cron, you've got Windows Task Scheduler, SAP has its own, Oracle, Informatica, Mainframe has had its own, Snowflake's got a task scheduler, Salesforce, hyperscalers have multiple, and we're also seeing things like Airflow, Prefect, Daxter that are you know domain specific to, to data. And this is expected to continue, right? So the, the challenge is that how do you orchestrate across multiple systems and even orchestrators through a single pane of glass? And that's really where we see the role of Control M, is allow you to build, run, and manage workflows that span application systems, data systems, and their relationship all the way back. Now, this is a graphical representation of what a flow in control M looks like, so you can, from the icon, see that we're representing here a different variety of, of systems, all orchestrated through, through control M. Now, uh, anybody who's been using Airflow knows the, the value of visualization and, and, and lineage, but, it's hard to tell by looking at the, this, the graphic on the left, or to your right, is this running some kind of ML pipeline? Is this you know, doing some supply chain processing or what? So there's um, the concept of business service that I'll talk about, but before that, the ability to interact with Control M is user and persona specific. You can do this using an as code format, whether it's Python or JSON. You can expose it to business users through apps. And more importantly, take a collection of jobs that might include Airflow DAGs as well and represent them what, as, as a business service so that you can see when is a particular business service going to start, how many tasks does it have across how many systems, when is it going to complete, so on and so forth. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But so the way we see the role for Control M is to be the layer of abstraction for orchestration across systems for both applications as well as data pipelines. Now you see two sort of logos on the screen. One is Control M, one is Helix Control M. Control M is the self-hosted version, and Helix Control M is our SaaS offer. Much like Airflow has the open source self-hosted version, and then you can have managed service offers from either the hyperscalers or astronomer. Control M is not new. You know, it's been around for a long time. Thousands of customers around the world in every industry vertical. So that's how we see the role of Control M, which is across application systems, which is SAP or the mainframe, all the way down to um, data pipelines and airflow. So that brings us to, okay, so why are we here? Where this is the Airflow Summit, why are we talking about Control M and Airflow. From my description, you've probably already um, you know, seen that Control M is an orchestration engine. And immediately the question is, well, so is Airflow. So why do we need one orchestrator to talk to the other orchestrator? When we look at data pipeline architectures, specifically modern data pipelines driving you know, modern ETL, AI, ML, it sort of looked like this. You know, they were, they were you know, the, the one architecture is entirely based on Google, doing some fraud detection. There's another one that's doing predictive maintenance. I didn't have enough room on the screen. I wanted to put an Azure one. 
but I think everybody gets the point that, you know, when start data initiatives started moving to the cloud, this is what data pipelines look like. And as data pipelines have grown and are taking a much more critical role in the enterprise, there is, they need to now coexist with, with the larger workflow. So let me go ahead and build this out. So on the top are what you would consider applications driving some um, important transactional systems and outcomes, things like procure to pay, financial close, supply chain, point of sale systems. Control M has been, as I mentioned earlier, been around a long time, is often the standard for application work orchestration in many organizations. Down below, now Control M is also used by customers for data pipeline orchestration, but as some of these projects move to the cloud, we saw lots of open source tools like Airflow being used for data pipeline orchestration. So Airflow is definitely the one that has uh, gained a lot of traction in the market. And what we heard from our customers was that they now have a need for connecting Control M and Airflow together. Why? Well, one of the, the use cases that came up the most was, well, I have got DAGs and Airflow that are dependent on workflows that run in other systems, such as SAP or Oracle or, you know, you name it. And we are usually using guesswork to figure out when those workflows will be done so that our DAGs can start. So let's say financial, financial data is being orchestrated by Control M, and we know by tribal knowledge that that's usually done by three, so we'll set our DAGs to start at four. So then they can take the data, start the ETL, and drive the downstream DAG processing. Well, that's one use case, right, that we, we want interoperability so that we're not doing guesswork. What if, the, what if Control M's workflows that are running, let's say, SAP or some other financial um, banking system is not done by three o'clock? It's running late. When should the DAG start? And it goes beyond that. It's also about visibility, right? So we have provided, based on the demand from our customers, an integration into Airflow, right? And one of, some of the key benefits of that are, one is visualization. You'll get to see that in a minute. I'll try to do a, it's, it's not gonna be a full demo. It's a short 25 minute session, so it'll be more of a click through. But you, number one, get to visualize the workflows, the DAGs, as well as the predecessors and dependent workflows outside of Airflow through a single point of control. You can do SLA management, meaning if you've got data pipelines that are, let's say, refreshing some key dashboards, and you have a business SLA of being done by 6 p.m., but let's say there's upstream processing outside of Airflow that's running behind. Well, by having them connected in Control M, you will know, let's say, at 2 p.m., that there's a problem somewhere upstream that's going to cause a delay within the Airflow DAGs, and they're not going to be done by 6 p.m., and you can take some remedial action. You can maybe let your business users know the dashboard refresh today is gonna to be an hour late. Business users are usually a lot more forgiving if you give them a heads up and a warning that hey, things are gonna be late versus them logging in and finding out things were not up to date. We support the standalone Apache Airflow, we, have, we support Astronomer, support Google Cloud Composer, and very soon we will have support for MWA as well. And by very soon, we're hoping like in the next 60 days. The last one is complex scheduling patterns. So one of the things that Control M has a very, very rich heritage in is the ability to do complex scheduling. What do I mean by that? Well, I have a workflow that is set to run Monday through Friday, but what happens if one of those days happens to fall on a holiday? What should happen with that? So Control M allows you to build that type of logic very easily by using calendars and say, okay, here are all my company holidays in a calendar, and here's when I want, usually want to schedule my, my workflows. If any of these days fall happens to be a holiday, you can set policies, they automatically skip it, move it a day ahead, process the day before, and all of these complex scheduling patterns can now be easily applied to Airflow. Okay, so, this, is, this won't be like a full-blown demo, but I wanted to give you some visualization as well and not, not just do a um, slideware version. So let me get out of PowerPoint. Okay, so now I am in the 
monitoring domain of, of control M. And here is a sample process that is doing some financial close. And we can see here that in control M that we have a variety of different types of tasks. This is a job that's doing file transfers. We have a job here that is running some database extracts, okay? And these can be a variety of different tasks. I'll show you a sample of that. But we have this now connected to an Airflow DAG, okay? So there's upstream processing, which is not necessarily data pipeline orchestration, that is now connected and visualized through Control-M. Uh, using, now our, I failed to mention this earlier, our Airflow integration is using the Airflow API to connect to Airflow. And you can see that when we trigger an Airflow DAG through Control-M, there's an Airflow tab. And we can see all of the different tasks within that DAG that have either run, have skipped. We can pull in the logs from Airflow directly into Control-M. You can see the Airflow log directly. You can even launch the Airflow interface from here. So what you just saw was an Airflow DAG, all of the upstream dependencies that were happening outside of Airflow in orchestration engines like Control-M now connected from a single pane of glass. And I can easily and seamlessly toggle between Control-M and, and Airflow. Now, data pipelines running through Airflow are often not the end of a business process. When they're done, for example, a classic example one customer gave us was that they are using Airflow to trigger some ML pipelines that are detecting customer, or predicting customer churn. Well, what should happen once you've detected customer churn? You, you probably want to send them some promotional offers so that they don't churn out of, 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 your, of your business. Well, that is not going to happen inside a data pipeline. That's going to go back to perhaps a CRM like Salesforce or something like that. So Control-M, because it has the ability to orchestrate Salesforce and, and platforms, even banking and insurance still rely heavily on platforms like the mainframe, you can now easily make this event-driven and say, okay, customer churn detection is done. Here are the customers that you know promotional offers should be sent to, for example. So in this example, we are now triggering um, some SAP jobs. Okay, So you can now see the seamless interaction and connectivity between Airflow and other workflows from a single pane of glass. How do we go about building these types of workflows? So we have a graphical interface where you can drag and drop and, and add um, jobs. This is particularly um, valuable for folks who are not sort of engineering savvy or don't, don't identify as engineers. So I can, for example, let's see, let me pick something from AWS. So let's say I wanted to add something for a DynamoDB. I can drag and drop that. I can, you know, make something dependent on that, and, and I have that. Or I could also, uh, okay, let me go put up Visual Studio Code. I can even define the same thing either in JSON or using Control-M's Python client, right? So this is an, a very important part of our value proposition is allowing different types of users to interact with Control-M based on their preference. So if you, can, you know, if you like drag and drop, um, you can start there, you can write everything in code, you can mix and match, you can start building in um, the graphical interface and then you can export that out as, as JSON, commit that to a Git repo and have your CI CD pipeline have the validation build and promotion inside control M in an automated fashion. I mentioned advanced scheduling earlier. Um, let me give you a quick click through of that. So you can now, let's see, let, take a look at some an advanced example. So I can very easily say that, okay, I want this workflow to run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but if it happens to be a holiday, I would like it to, there's a variety of options. I want it to disable the run, I want it to run the next day, the previous day, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, I don't have time to go into detail, but what, what would, you would have another calendar which defines your holidays within Control App. So these are complex scheduling patterns that are very, very common in the application space. So, and now we're, what we're hearing from our customers is that similar type of requirements are becoming very, very common for modern data pipelines. 
uh, I was at a data conference in Europe a few months ago and I asked one of the data engineers there, what happens when you have this type of complex requirement? He said, well, today we just let the data pipelines run or it's like, you know, we have some kind of uh, Slack message that goes out and that tells the data ops team that, you know, make sure that these DAGs don't kick off today because the upstream processing that's gonna drive some of that, some of that data is not there. Now, I understand there are other ways of accomplishing that. You could use maybe, you know, some data aware scheduling in Airflow. You could, some people are trying to use PubSub type messaging to drive some of that. All those are, um, I think, decent alternatives, but the value here is that not only are you driving the scheduling patterns through Control M, but all the visualization and auditability across workflows is now in one system, and you're not building integrations uh, to connect one orchestration engine to the other. And then finally, on the click-through demo, you can visualize a collection of jobs in Control M, which could include an Airflow DAG, as a business service. So here I can see that I had a smart building data pipeline that has completed on time. When you are running jobs through Control M, we're maintaining all of the execution history and based on that, we're constantly learning and we can predict when will a workflow start, when, a wor when will a workflow finish, and if there's a problem, we can immediately not only alert you that there's a problem, but we can tell you that it impacts business service X you have 35 minutes to fix this problem, otherwise you're not gonna meet the 6 p.m. SLA. How do we know that? Because we're constantly computing that the remaining jobs in this stream run for an hour each, and that means if we don't fix this failed job or delayed job in 15 minutes, adding all that up will push us past the 6 p.m. deadline. So this is constant statistical algorithm crunching that we do in the back end, and we can actually kind of see here that we have one, a predictive maintenance pipeline that has stalled, and uh, when you will get a Slack message or an email, it will tell you that we've had a job failure, and that's impacting predictive maintenance, and you will actually, it'll point you exactly where in the complex workflow you're having the problem. So here we can see it says data ops PM notify ended with a failure, you can immediately then launch into that viewpoint and you can see that that's the job that's having the problem and, and what business services is it, is, is it impacting. Okay, so that was just a quick walkthrough. Um, let me go back to my deck and the last section here is just to go through some of the capabilities. Okay, so as I said, we've been in the orchestration space for a very long time and what we've learned from our customers is that what we have on the screen are the basic building blocks of good orchestration, right? So if you're evaluating orchestration or you're looking at your own or orchestration practices and trying to figure out what good looks like, well, over the last you know, couple of decades plus, this is what we've learned. The foundation are, it should be able to support heterogeneous workflows, not just you know, uh, a certain domain. You must have end-to-end -end visibility. You can't really control something you can't see. And then sort of on top of this foundation are things like SLA management. I just walked through some of that. It should have really good error handling and notification. Appropriate user experience. So not everybody in an enterprise is an engineer and not everybody is an operator. They're business users. And they're all relying on this automation for business outcomes. So anybody who has a stake in the outcome of automation must have a way of interacting. So if you're a developer, you can interact with Control M through a Python client. You can interact with it through APIs. If you are in uh, data ops, there's rich dashboards, some of which I just showed you earlier. If you are a business user, we allow you to look at business outcomes. And you know that's much like tracking a package. I don't care what truck it's on. I just want to know if it's going to be on time or not. So to support lots of heterogeneous workflows, we provide tons of out-of-the-box integrations. This is just a sampling of a few of them. We have a dedicated integrations team. We release new integrations every month. Should be no surprise of late. Massive focus of our integrations has been on uh, cloud services. So AWS, GCP, Azure. There's, there's quite a, a long list that we have been focused on lately. And we've decoupled this from our um, 
major release cycle because customers need integrations on a regular basis, so this is coming out on a monthly basis. SLA management, I, I talked about this earlier. You visualize this as a business service, understand when things are gonna start, when they're gonna finish, if there's a problem, how much time do I have to fix the problem? These are, these are really, really important capabilities in running efficient production. I mentioned the Python client earlier. I mentioned the mobile app earlier, so you can here see that you can give the mobile app control them in the hands of business users, and they can just track without having to call anybody in ops or anywhere else that, oh, okay, my um, particular business outcome is on time or not. If it's not on time, how long is it gonna take before it's restored? It's much like tracking a flight or tracking a package. And I'll close with this. So obviously I work for uh, BMC and that's my point of view. Before you go, we'll just ask ChatGPT, what are the benefits for integrating Control-M and Airflow? So. So here's a little bit of an independent opinion at the end, right? So you can see that ChatGPT's response is along very similar lines to what I mentioned earlier. It's comprehensive workflow orchestration, improved monitoring and management, increased automation and efficiency, so on and so forth. And obviously you guys can all run this on your own and, and, and get the independent opinion of ChatGPT on this. Okay, so with that, I think I am out of time. Um, I appreciate all of you coming to the session.